Good morning, everyone. Hope that everyone is doing well. I know this is quite inconvenient to have to cancel a worship this morning. You know that I'm the last one to ever do that, but I think in light of uh, the current COVID outbreak amongst the members, that a time of quarantine or isolation this week will be good for our community. We're not the only church to cancel this morning, as I saw that even Monte Vista Church of the Nazarene in East Phoenix also had to cancel due to COVID protocols. The good news is that we are the church and we can still worship and experience God even in times like this. Our only sadness, of course, is not seeing each other and not being able to take the Eucharist together, but that's all something that can be remedied next Sunday. I want to read this week's gospel passage and just point out something quickly that came to mind. Uh, this won't be a whole sermon, of course, but just something interesting that I saw and perhaps you'll find interesting too. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The people were filled with expectation and everyone wondered whether John might be the Christ. John replied to them all, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than me is coming. I'm not worthy to loosen the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The shovel he uses to sift the wheat from the husks is in his hands. He will clean out his threshing area and bring the wheat into his barn. But he will burn the husks with a fire that can't be put out. When everyone was being baptized, Jesus also was baptized. While he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit came down on him in bodily form like a dove. And there was a voice from heaven, You are my son, whom I dearly love, in you I find happiness. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, this morning as we are separated by uh, the necessity of making sure that we remain healthy, we pray that uh, your presence would be felt in each of our lives today, that your Holy Spirit would remain connected to us and would connect us to one another, even throughout uh, distance. Uh, Jesus, for those who are sick this morning, we pray for their full recovery that they would feel better, that they would uh, uh, be able to return to uh, life as they know it um, as soon as possible. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday, and we have entered that season of epiphany that uh, we talked about when the wise men came. Hopefully this week you had the opportunity to use the home liturgy for the wise men's arrival on January 6th. But this is the time where we begin to wrestle with and really contemplate uh, that God has come to be with us. Uh, God has moved into our neighborhood, as St. John says in his gospel. You know, we did not move into God's neighborhood. God has come to be with us. And this is the time when we should be processing that information and, and reality in our lives. And we should be having new thoughts and ideas and revelations about the reality of Christ being with us. And the baptism of the Lord really enforces that. Let me reread the beginning of verse 21. When everyone was being baptized, Jesus also was baptized. We've talked about this before, but baptism is not about what oftentimes evangelical Christians think it's about or how we treat it. Uh, and I want to keep this short this morning, so uh, I won't go into all that, uh, all the theology and things related to baptism. But baptism is about belonging. It's about identification. Oftentimes we treat it differently as proclamation about how we are proclaiming that we are with God. When in fact baptism is about God being with us. Being baptized into the church and into Christ is about being belonging. It's about the opportunity to belong to the church and to the Christ. It's about being part of what God is doing in the church family as we know it. And verse 21 says, Jesus also was baptized. Remember that if baptism is just about the forgiveness of sins, and if it's just about proclaiming that we're following God, then there's no reason for Jesus to even be baptized. Jesus does not need forgiveness of sins, but Jesus wants to be part of the people. Jesus is not just moving into our neighborhood, you understand. He's going to be with us in all of who we are and all that we are doing. And it's not that God bought the best house in the neighborhood 
on the block and then moved in and then locked God's self away in it. God has come to be with us in everything we do and to be a part of who we are. God wants to be with you and I, with us. And that's an epiphany. Jesus, thanks for uh, your words from St. Luke's Gospel this morning. We pray that those words would be applicable in our lives. And Jesus, uh, right now I pray for our entire community that you would be with us, that you would be real to us. And Jesus, we look forward to gathering again next Sunday, healthy and whole. And so Jesus, uh, work in our physical bodies, but keep our spirits up as well. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, Zoe family. Love you deeply, and we'll see you next Sunday.